you guys. Today we are going to be mounting this uh, golden pothos onto the moss pole. As you can see over here in the photo, uh, it was a fun little project. Um, I recommend it if you want to have your pothos grow a little bit bigger leaves. Uh, growing them so that they grow up a, a structure just like any of the other aeroids, philodendrons, and, and, uh, and whatnot. They, um, they get larger leaves as they feel supported. Uh, so, <clears throat> a lot of fun to do, especially if you're in tight space, uh, because uh, they can tend to take up a lot of space as they drape down in a pot. Uh, if you uh, focus their growth up a pole, uh, you can kind of give it a, a narrower footprint, but uh, also fill in a bit of space. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a lot of fun to try. Uh, pothos in general, uh, just for a little care instructions. Uh, I'm just starting to get to uh, grow them fairly well here. Um, I've been killing them in the in the past. Uh, I've I've now come to the conclusion that I overwater. So if you're an overwater or show too much love to your plant, the moss pole will probably help you out. Uh, because when I feel the urge to water my plant, it might not necessarily need it. I can water the moss pole instead of watering the soil. Uh, so and in this video, you'll see the um, the uh, the self-watering moss pole. That's what I've been using. Uh, and I will link the in this video the um, the the video where I I created the moss pole, not this specific one, but the self-watering moss pole in general. And uh, yeah, so again, back to care. Um, the golden pothos uh, can tolerate most types of light. It prefers a bright indirect light. That's where you're going to get the best growth out of it. Uh, but it can tolerate a shadier spot. Uh, a little more on the medium light uh, to even low light, dare I say. Uh, it won't thrive in low light. It'll get more stringy. The leaves will get smaller. Um, but uh, but it will it will do it will survive ish, <laughs> for lack of better words. Bright and direct is definitely where it would prefer to be. Um, what else? Uh, the, the soil, it really wants the soil to dry down between waterings. So it is an expressive plant, so you want to make sure to uh, let the leaves uh, just tell you. They'll go a little bit dull, they'll, they'll start to curl just slightly, and uh, you'll know that it's time to give it a drink. Uh, water it thoroughly, and then, uh, and then repeat the process. So it might be, uh, depending on your house, it might be once a week, it might be once every two weeks, it might be once every three weeks you might have to water it. It depends on the season as well. Uh, there's a lot of variables, so uh, just let your plant tell you when it needs to be watered. Uh, that's the biggest trick that, that I can uh, I can tell you. Uh, that's what's helped me a lot. Um, yeah, let's get into this video. Okay, so to repot this, I've got uh, a few things. I've got the moss pole. Uh, check in the link up above. I'll put a card for uh, me how I, how I made these uh, self-watering moss poles. Um, I've got my uh, my plant, my uh, golden pothos. Uh, what is this? Epipremnum aureum, I believe. And uh, I've got the uh, the clay pot. This one here, I'm going to take the price tag out of the uh, out of the pot. Good thing about clay pots is they tend to be a little less expensive <laughs> than a ceramic, um, and they're they're fantastic for um, for maintaining moisture uh, or or drying things down a little bit faster than a plastic pot. So since I overwater a lot of my aeroids. Um, this is a great uh, system for me to use a clay pot. If you find that you underwater, you could probably use a plastic or uh, a glazed ceramic. Also, I found uh, with myself when I'm using a moss pole, I can uh, I can utilize or I can I can uh, uh, take my my urge to water my plants and just water my moss pole instead of watering the pot. Uh, you can water your moss pole a lot more frequently than you can water your plant uh, without ill effect. So, and then I've also got my soil mix uh, with uh, golden pothos. It's not terribly important uh, what you use for your soil mix. A general uh, bag mix could be, uh, could be just fine. Uh, general all-purpose potting soil. Um, but I have my uh, Pro Mix High Porosity, so there's a lot of extra perlite in here. Uh, if you don't have much perlite, I would add a little bit in, uh, just for added airflow and uh, increased drainage. And uh, in this mix, I also threw in some, uh, some orchid bark. Um, this is actually um, uh, uh, reptile bedding. I got it at uh, PetSmart. It's not orchid bark. It's still uh, fur bark, but it's a lot cheaper if you, if you go the, uh, the pet store route. I think it was, it was a large bag for $30, which is fantastic. 
Uh, <laughs> save money wherever you can. Sometimes you need to look in the, the odd places. So, uh, so yeah, that's my soil mix. I've also got my uh, uh, Velcro plant tape, the plant ties, and let's get started. So I'm going to put my moss pole in here. I'm uh, not covering the, uh, the hole in the bottom, as you can probably see. Hopefully everything is coming into frame. I'm going to add a little bit of soil to the bottom. Make a mess, that's the fun of gardening. <laughs> okay, lean your pole up against something as, uh, as you're trying to, to work with this stuff. It will want to try to fall over. Carefully work your plant out of the pot. There we go. I'm not going to tease the roots too, too much, but I want to just uh, get them out of that uh, growing in a ring formation. So I'm just going to play with the bottom here. There we go. That's probably enough. I don't need this tag. I know it's a golden pothos. And I'm just going to stick it down here in front of the pole. And then we're going to backfill all around the plant. We want to press it in around the moss pole, more so than around the roots of the plant, because you want to stabilize this moss pole. It's going to be kind of tippy, so uh, for the first little while, until the roots start to develop and, and uh, your plant gets stabilized by the, or your pot of soil gets stabilized by your plant. Uh, you'll probably want to uh, have this in a spot close to a wall or near something that will hold it up. Just going to spin this around so that the the seam of the moss pole is at the back. Eventually it won't matter because the plant will cover it all. So this golden pothos has already started to uh, to vine, which is fantastic. So we're going to take these vines and we are going to casually, I don't know whether you're able to see here, are you able to see the uh, the aerial roots already starting to develop? Uh, wherever possible, you want to try to uh, situate those so that they, they go into the moss or, or are touching the moss pole. Uh, that way it will help the plant um, grow into the moss pole. Okay, so I'm going to get myself some uh, some Velcro tape. I love this Velcro tape. I'll link down below uh, for the Amazon link for, for this stuff. Uh, you can find it in, in your uh, local garden center usually or in a hardware store in the plant section. And I find that it's, it's uh, fantastic. It's, uh, it's very inexpensive and you can reuse it uh, as long as you uh, don't mind the, uh, the size that you originally cut it to. <laughs> so it's perfect for this because you can, uh, you can put it on, you can hold the plant in place, and then as your plant grows and it roots in at that spot, you can uh, take the Velcro tape off and move it up if it's uh, starting to grow away from the pole. So this one here is going to be perfect. It's got a little root starting to develop. I'm going to do another piece of tape around here. You don't want to go too tight. You don't want to do it too firm, but uh, you want to be able to steady the plant into place. Plants grow better when they feel secure, so just keep that in mind. And we've got another little uh, little guy off to the side here that uh, I think he's a little bit too small yet to attach, but let's give it a try. Oh, and there's a little root there. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it! It's such a little easy process to do. Uh, it can save a little bit of space if you have uh, limited space by planting it up a moss pole. Uh, they're lovely. These plants are lovely to have just as a uh, vining plant in a hanging basket or just hanging off of a bookshelf. But uh, it gives a different vibe, the moss pole. Okay. I think we got that. It doesn't look great now, but as the plant relaxes and starts to grow up the pole, uh, you'll notice a big difference. And also, being allowed to grow up, these leaves in time should start to get bigger and bigger and bigger. 
uh, because that's what happens when they when they uh, feel supported. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to see what you're growing up moss poles. Please um, join me on the Plants and Things What's Growing page or on Instagram. Uh, post your photos of your uh, your plants growing on moss poles, and uh, I'd love to see what they're doing. Uh, what are your tricks and tips and and all that stuff to to help everybody else out uh, with their growing journey? And uh, yeah, until next time, you guys. Happy growing.